Welcome everyone to episode 68 of the Stardom Cast. I am your host, Matt Turner. I hope everyone's having a good day. Beautiful day out there. Every day is a beautiful day. I hope everybody's rocking and rolling. Um, I hope everybody's uh, enjoying this. Oh yeah, in the States, summer has just started. So I hope everybody has had going to have a good summer. Hope everybody's going to have some uh, fun stuff planned out. If you're going anywhere or doing anything cool, drop me a line. Let me know what you're doing. I'd love to hear about it. Yeah, I kind of little little funny little little sidetrack. We're gonna get sidetracked here, you know, right after the get go because that's how Uncle MT does it here on the Stardom Cast. But back in my younger twenties, back in the bar scene, back uh, I'm talking 17, 18, 19 years ago, when those downloadable jukeboxes first came out, I remember going to the bars with my buddies in the middle of winter. It's like you know five, ten degrees out, if that. 10, 11 o'clock at night, walking into a bar. Like I said, it's freezing out. You wait in a couple hours. Everybody's feeling good having a couple of drinks, and I go to that downloadable jukebox, and I'd hit Will Smith's Summertime. You get everybody looking around, watching the game or whatever. I'm like, what? it's five degrees out. What's what's going on? How come somebody's playing Summertime on the jukebox? So, you know, hey, a little funny story. I like to throw that out at you. But enough of that. There is a lot to talk about. A lot to talk about. First, I just want to tell you about my crazy week. Uh, last week, I told you it was my brother's birthday, and then I had my sister's birthday. Amber and I celebrated our 10-year wedding anniversary. So all together, I think we've been together about a little over 13 years. So God bless her for putting up with me that long. We had a nice little day, a little brunch, a little Dave and Buster's, a little shopping, a little nice little dinner. So nothing too, too uh, complicated. So that was uh, pretty well. Then the next day was wrestling. Myself and Andy Header, a little blue and gold action tag match for WXW. I thought we did really well. A couple little things that I thought I could have done better. Timing, ring positioning. But all in all, uh, the match was really good. Our opponents really liked it. Crowd gave us a standing ovation. Uh, and uh, Samu, who's the uh, owner of WXW, you know, from the Head Shrinkers, WWF, a legend, you know, wrestling legend, former tag team champion. Uh, came back to the locker room and went out of his way to uh, to put us over and let us know how much he enjoyed the match. So. I thought that was really cool that uh, that he would do that. It's a nice little stamp of approval. It's nice to know that after almost 20 years of independent wrestling that every now and again, I'll I'll do a little something right. So uh, in the midst of all that craziness, oh, uh, Father's Day as well. Happy, you know, Father's Day to all the fathers out there, especially my badass dad, who's just, you know, my hero and just one of the best people, someone who's taught me uh, so much in my life. And even after 40 years of being on this planet, I'm still learning from him. So you had that. Then let's throw in the fact that my internet went down for about five days. So Stardom releases four st- shows in about four or five day period. Can't watch them on Stardom World because no internet. I had uploaded the, uh, for the Patreon, the Stardom X Stardom 2019 and the Mayu Iwatani. Finally said it right. Iwatani. Go me. Uh, Red Belt Retrospective. I probably had those in the can about seven, eight days ago, ready to get out to the the loyal Patreons and uh, patrons, patrons, Patreons. And I just, I couldn't upload it and get it out. Once I finally got it out to Sean, my main man, Sean, about a day or so after he edited, he's like, yeah, I can't send these out. I need all the information for for Patreon or this or that. So I had to, uh, you know, I had to text the OG, you know, the godfather of this podcast, your friend of mine, you know, Rob Goodwin. Uh, and he had to help us out there a little bit. And, uh, you know, Rob's doing well. I probably get two or three messages a week just to people saying hi and asking about him. And uh, Rob, I know you're listening, my man. I know I appreciate the support. And as always, open invite anytime you want to come back on your show. Yes, this is still your show. You're more than welcome to. Whether you want to talk about stardom, AEW, All Japan, New Japan, Led Zeppelin, Harry Potter, Spider-Man, whatever you want to do, brother. You have the you got my number and uh, anything you need, you let me know. And not only do I got your back, but our friends, fan and family over at the Stardom Cast, we got your back as well. So anything you need, you just let us know. OK, so I'm just going to kind of just outline what we're going to do. I'm going to go through a little bit of news. I'm going to go through the four shows. Yes, four shows that I have to review. I'm kind of just going to just go through them real fast, just give you the results. And then my star rating, uh, a couple of them I'll kind of maybe pause on and kind of just go through. Just because I said there's four shows and then the uh, main event of the podcast is uh, this Saturday is the start on pay-per-view, the two cage matches. So I'm going to be doing a preview and my predictions. Not only do I have my predictions, but also my wonderful wife as well. So um, I'll be going through that. And again, I can't say thank you enough just for all the positive feedback that I've been getting. Uh, Not only for that, I mean, it just really gets me going and just really gets my creative juices flowing when I'm getting constant positive feedback from everybody, whether it's beyond Instagram or whether it's beyond the Discord or whether it's on Twitter. I I can't say thank you enough, and I can't say thank you enough for everybody's patience. Like I said, I have so many ideas and so many uh, things kind of in the can or getting ready to record, but it just seems like I'm hitting kind of, you know, puddle after puddle with my internet going down and just some editing stuff and, you know, just trying to figure out how to work the Patreon. But I think we all got it. I think my man, Sean, he's not only is he doing it, 
is he doing, you know, majority of the heavy lifting here on the stardom cast, you know, and the kind of behind the curtains with the editing. But, man, you, you think that I'm positive. That guy's way more positive than I am. I mean, sometimes when I get kind of on something, you know, and, and I'm really focused on something and it doesn't go the exact way I want to, sometimes I, I lose a little bit of my positivity. I kind of crack a little. And <laughs> He's been great to vent and kind of just a person like, hey, man, you know, don't worry about it. You know, send me the file. Send me what I need to send. I'll take care of it. So always the biggest shout out to uh to my man Sean just for you know <laughs> keeping me sane here so uh, just because you know I just I just want the best material for for everybody so Stardom X Stardom 2019 is up for the Patreons um, probably by the time you listen to this uh, the Mayu Iwatani 2019 2000 uh, yeah 2020 Red Belt review should be up as well I plan on recording later this week the uh, for the red belt patreon members the watch along with you tommy versus sherry the match that got five and a half uh five point five stars yeah five, that's five and a half five and a half stars from the wrestling observer i plan on cranking that one out in the next day or two hopefully that'll be in the podcast feed for the red belt patreons on the next week or so hopefully if i don't hit any more speed bumps um i completely forgot that for the um on the podcast poll that rob put up about a month or so ago that winning on the poll what won on the poll was basically a dream booking scenario we're supposed to be uh, me against rob putting our cards together so i forgot about that i had a couple of the patreon members saying hey you know we would really like for you to do that and obviously i don't have anybody to go against i asked my wife if she wanted to and <laughs> she flat out refused me and no problem so what i'm going to do is i am going i'll probably record that this week as well for the white belt and red belt tier patreon members I'm going to do two separate cards. One, it'd be as if Rossio Gao gave me the booking sheet as of today or tomorrow or whenever I record it. And I'm going to do eight matches of the current stardom roster. I um, don't think I'm going to say who's going to go over, but I'm just going to put what if I had, if I can put together eight matches of the current stardom roster. And then what I'm going to do is basically like all time stardom. So it's basically as if I had the DeLorean or Back to the Future, or if I had the Time Stone for all you Marvel fans or for all you Bill and Ted fans, if I had the time traveling phone booth and I can put together eight, and I'm going to do eight matches on that, any eight matches that I can from anybody from stardom from present to all the way 2011, you know, if they had at least one match in the stardom ring, they're fair game. So I'll probably be drafting that maybe even later tonight. So hopefully those now, next two Patreons should be up. I'll record them probably this week, and they should be up next week. And I'm actually starting the B. Priestley Red Belt uh, World of Stardom uh, watch along as well. Not watch along, but review as well. So I hope to have that at the end of the month. Um, I'm not going to really kind of go by too much of a schedule just because it's just how hectic everything is. I mean, that's just that's just my life, and I love it. You know, I literally get up as soon as my heat feet hit the ground. Uh, you know, I hit the I hit the ground running, and you know, I absolutely love it. And again, I can't thank everybody for the positive support. Um, he said, I have a lot of stuff in the pike, a lot of stuff written down and just a lot of really good ideas. So I'm going to try to, I'm going to get out, you know, at least one podcast a week to the free listeners uh, for the Patreon. I'm going to try, you know, how me and Rob had it, uh, you know, one every other week uh, to, to a month for the white belt members and the red belt members. You'll get those two uh, every month and then you'll get one, one a week of a, of a watch long where I'll pick a match and, uh, you know, I'll tell you when to hit play on your stardom world and, uh, you know, we'll watch it together and I'll record it and I'll, you know, kind of just break down the match. So, so that's that. Um, any questions, comments, you know, any suggestions you want to hear for the uh, white belt or red belt tier uh, Patreon members or, you know, anything in general, please just let me know. Um, let's get in the news. Just two quick things I want to talk about in the news about a week or two ago on Chris Jericho's podcast, Talk is Jericho. Tony Storm was on an absolute fantastic interview. Yeah, I mean, you want to talk about somebody who's kind of dealt a, belt ha- dealt a bad hand the WWE and didn't really go in and bury them. You know, it was just super, super positive. Uh, she was very adamant that she wanted to come back to stardom. Obviously, she's the first very decorated in stardom, fantastic uh, in-ring competitor, the first and only wrestler to win the five-star Grand Prix and the Cinderella tournament in the same calendar year, a former Red Belt champion as well. You know, like I said, she made it very apparent that she wanted to come back to stardom. Uh, it's very, you know, apparent that she put uh, Io Shirai, well, in the interview, she put Io Shirai over as somebody she learned a lot from. Again, hence why a lot of people are on EO. I say this podcast all the time. I think she's the greatest female wrestler of all time. Uh, you know, another debate for another day. And she did make mention that she didn't want to wrestle Mayu. I think that's kind of like what everybody wants to do. As far as my opinion on it, uh, it's going to happen. I really, really think it's going to happen. Uh, I think that uh, we'll talk about it here in a little bit when we get to the show reviews. Kari came out and challenged uh, the Aphrodite team of Sai Kamatani and Yutami to a tag match. And she did mention that she has a, uh, a new partner. She came out with a hat on backwards. Don't know if that was kind of overshadowing. That's Tony Storm's thing. But that's going to be my guess that uh, it's Kari and Tony versus Utami and Saya. So 
another just big match on the on the calendar for this year of stardom. I mean, they just keep plugging away. The other news item that I do want to talk about and touch upon, I don't have all the you see a lot of rumors about this uh, about Sasha Banks leaving WWE. I think it was like five or six weeks ago. Her and Naomi walked out, and she um, you've been hearing the last two or three days. You know, by the time you hear this, four or five days that she has her release. I haven't seen anything official yet. I always say if I don't hear it from Meltzer or Brian Alvarez, who's usually kind of spot on on their material, that uh, I, you know I kind of wait. You know, I kind of take everything with a grain of salt. So that's where you know that is with that. But she has made mention before a couple of years ago. She did leave WWE to kind of cool down for a little bit. She went over to Japan to train. She absolutely loved the culture and uh, was very adamant that she did want to work in. The, you know, Japanese style match in Japan, specifically stardom. And she made mention in an interview, I think it was Sports Illustrated, when they asked her her dream opponent was, and she said it was Mayu Yutani, you know, without even taking a breath. So me being a positive thinker, me thinking just really anything can happen in wrestling, you know, we've seen it before. I think this match is going to happen. I think by the end of the calendar year, you're going to see a Sasha Banks, I don't think they're going to let her use that name, versus a Mayu. And you may see it in November at that uh, joint New Japan show. They need to fill 15,000 seats. Uh, Sasha Banks versus Mayu Iwatani is a big, big draw. I mean, she's she's a big, big name. And I think that her style would fit very well in stardom. So, again, I'm the type of guy I grew up. When I grew up, instead of watching wrestling, it was Hulkamania, Hulkamania running wild. And then you would see Hulk Hogan come back X amount of years later. I think it was like in 2002 tear it up with the rocket WrestleMania and then win the belt back again. So I'm just a firm believer that anything can happen in wrestling because I've seen it with my own two eyes and me being a giant Marvel fan. If you would have told me five or six years ago, I'd be watching a Spider-Man movie with the new Spider-Man and Tobey Maguire, and Andrew Garfield. I'd say that you're crazy, but literally anything is possible. That's the world we live in. And that's one of the reasons why it's a wonderful world we live in. Okay. Let's get on to the four shows. It's funny, I actually watched these out of order. I watched the 612 show first, so <laughs> but I will go by 611. Okay, so 611 in Osaka, Momokogo gets her first two points over Waka Sugiyama. Uh, she wins with the what I've been calling the Rich Cloth um, Northern Light Suplex, but she it's now named the Nectar Peach, or maybe it has been, I just haven't picked up on it. But get a little better taking the notes. I uh, had that's one at three stars. Match number two, we saw Lady C get a submission victory over Saida. Very no, I'm not confusing. Very surprised. I thought, kind of thought Saida would, would take this one, but I'm a big fan of Lady C. Uh, she gets her first two points. I thought that I thought it was an absolute solid match. These two really laid into each other. And we are seeing a more aggressive side of Lady C, uh, which I'm a big fan of, considering the fact that she is the tallest member of the roster. I had this one at three and a quarter stars. Moving on to match number three, the Donald Amundo team of Julia and Mai Sakurai versus Ruako in... Uh, Momo Watanabe, I've been very vocal on this podcast the past few months that I don't think Ruaka is really improving at all. Even last week's episode, I, I thought her two matches were very, very, you know, below average. I thought she was really good here. She seems to be doing better in these tag scenarios, you know, when she's in there with a Julia or she's teaming with a, a Momo Watanabe uh, and or a Starlight Kid. But she really, really picked up her game here. I think maybe she just needs somebody to kind of just motivate her a little. And again, she's still young. You're in the ring with all these really, really top-notch wrestlers. You're only going to get better. But I'm just hoping we just see it progress a little little further. I thought this was, was really good. And we saw Julia win with a, with a standing knee strike. Like very much almost like a no-handed uh, Kamagoye. Uh, I don't think she's ever won a match with this before. Uh, if I'm wrong, you know, let me know. But I thought that was cool. Just adds another, you know, wrinkle into her, you know, into her arsenal. You know, she has the Bianca. She has a couple others, you know, uh, the Stealth Viper. She has the Northern Lights Bomb. She has the Falcon Arrow. And she has uh, the Glorious Driver. She's, so she's got a lot of big moves in her arsenal, which really just, when you're going towards a championship match in these bigger matches, which we're going to see in the five star, it just builds up the uh, false finishers just even more. So. I thought that was really cool. I just went at three stars. Simple match. Uh, everything, you know, went well. Like I said, I'll always give you the gentleman's three stars. Moving on, match number four. The God's Eye team of Mirai and Amy Sawyer versus Sai Kamatani and Yutami Haishista from the Queen's Quest. Started off as a really solid match. Uh, then it turned into kind of just a wild brawl to get the double count out. And that's where really the main thing of this was uh, Kari coming out, challenging the former tag team champions Aphrodite to a tag match where she says she has her own tag partner. Again, I think it's going to be Tony Storm. That's a big, big match if it is. Regardless of who it is, it's still Kari and Blank versus Sai and Yutami. Obviously, we know we're getting a Kari versus uh, Sai Kamatani white belt match coming down the line somewhere. And I thought Kari did a really good job by saying, you know, the first thing she said was, I thought that the belt was going to make you, but you're making the belt. And that's very, very key. You know, when you have the top two championships in stardom, 
that have been around some of the ways of some of the best wrestlers, you know, in the world, you know, between Mayu and Kari, Momo, you know, EO, a lot of top notch wrestlers have held that white belt Arisa. You know, I can go on and on. And when Kari's coming out, a legend, you know, and legend still in her prime, as I always say, and basically putting Saya over it, saying how important that belt is and that, that, you know, that belt I thought was going to make you, but you've actually made the belt just makes the belt that much more important. And it makes uh, their match more important. So I thought that was really, really good. The one thing I was confused on is just she said, yeah, I have a tag partner. Well, didn't her and Tam just form a team? You know, the White Knights, they I think they may even have merch, you know, came out. Like it was kind of a whole ordeal where they were like taking pictures together. And it's like now Kari's going off to find another tag partner. So not that I'm going to complain, but I just kind of thought that was funny. It's like, yeah, I'm in a tag match now, but I'm going to choose somebody else other than Tam that I just put this this name out. So, well, whatever. Uh, the match was OK. Um, three and a quarter stars. Hopefully we see this match somewhere down the road with these four again uh, where there's no like double count out again maybe in the goddess of stardom tag league match number five uh my himipoy uh natsupoy mike and himika the former artists of stardom champions versus the champions that they uh, they dethroned tam yunagi and mina of cosmic angel so you had the two longest reigning champs uh, in this match which i thought was really cool i thought that was i kind of sat in my seat a little bit i said oh you have the two longest reigning artists of stardom champs in this match and it's not on pay-per-view so i thought that was uh I thought that was very well done. I thought that was a good way to, to you know, build the house up, you know, on these road two shows. So I thought this was, I thought the match was really good. I had it three and a quarter stars. Again, I'm kind of flying through these. Obviously, the main crux of this match was uh, Tam and Natsupoy. We got the cage match coming up here at the end of the weekend. And then they have a singles match. It's kind of funny they're doing a cage match first and then the singles match. A little reverse booking for how spot on the booking's been from start. I kind of don't get that one, but okay. Uh, I thought that maybe Natsupoy would get the win. On this one to maybe kind of give her something on the side, but I thought it was a really cool stretch finish they had where they were kind of training real fast near falls, you know, one after another, almost like high speed style near falls. I thought that was really good. And I thought the two, you know, separating the Tam Natsupoy stuff, I thought the two tag teams, the Mina Yunagi team, which I'm a huge fan of, they're, they're improving so much, uh, worked really well. Mike and Himika, who I consider kind of the uncrowned number one contenders, that's kind of kind of going to tip my hat to you, Patreon members, of what I would book. But the tag match I want to see the most in this company is FWC versus uh, Mike and Himika. So, yeah, I thought it was really, really good. Uh, three and a half stars. Then we come on to a, uh, a three-way match with uh, Mayu Iwatani, Starlight Kid, and Shiri. Uh, I thought it was, you know, you have two very over baby faces and then a uh, dastardly heel. Obviously, Mayu is so beloved, one of the best women baby faces of all time. Shiri is the uh, wrestler of the year for me overall in any company, in any uh, gender and then you just have like Starlight Kid, you know, cheating, and you just know she's gonna get hers. <laughs> and man, Sherry lays these kicks in again. I talk about it every week on this podcast. Her kicks just get more brutal and brutal. And the way that you know what she did to Natsupoy last week, you just felt bad because everyone la- like likes Natsupoy. Where Starlight Kid, everybody likes her, but they you know she plays the heel role pretty well. Everyone wants one, everyone wants to see her get her ass kicked. So in the way that Starlight Kid sold these and her facials and selling for someone that wears a mask, I thought. They're always really good, but this is just on point. You know, when you have a legit shooter, a legit badass, the biggest badass in the company, <laughs> laying these kicks in your hair and that sound, Starlight Kid is, it could be half selling, half shoot, I don't know, but it got a really good reaction. I thought that everything matched really, really good. There was, uh, towards the end, I thought it was really cool how, you know, Sherry, she's the dominant champion, you know, the, the shooter, you know, the best wrestler in the world. And the, the former MK sisters realized maybe we need to team up to kind of take her out. They did for a hot second until Sherry finds a kink in the armor. And, uh, you know, this thing goes to the time limit, which I thought it would. But uh, I, I thought this was really, really solid match, three and three, four stars. We get to the main event of the show, Goddess of Stardom Tag Team Championship, uh, the FWC team of Hazuki and Koguma will defend defending the belt against Saki and Fukin Death. Don't know how Saki and Fukin Death gets this title shot. It wasn't maybe... A month or two ago, they had a tag win against, I don't know, Mike and Himika that I, whatever. <laughs> I just think sometimes with the title, and sometimes you just do that for title matches. Hey, like we need a main event on the show. It's not on pay-per-view. Uh, it's going to kind of help, you know, get the house up and get the viewers up. You know, not a problem. And this match was fine. Didn't go really too long at all. Uh, I thought it was, yeah, it was a little shade over 10 minutes. Koguma gets the, uh, our, uh, yeah, the, the, the FWC team of Hazuki and Koguma. Which is really just on par. I mean, the two of them just gel so well together. There's a reason why they're the tag champs. And I think they're going to stay the tag champs for a while. But um, 
uh, Saki actually gets hit with a little taste of her own medicine because she's the one that always well always gets the uh, the the kind of roll up wins and Fuku death too at some point as well. I really thought Hazuki would kind of maybe get the win with the brain buster or the uh, or the senton, but it was Koguma using that Koguma roll back roll on Saki to get the win in about ten minutes. I thought that was uh, I thought it was really good three and three fourth stars, and I'm excited for the match they built up. Mariah and Amy Sori came out in challenge FWC for the tag belt, so hopefully um well. They wouldn't do it if there wasn't going to be a challenge, but we'll see that match somewhere down the road. Okay, moving on. 6-12 in Osaka. Sasai Ida get her uh, move up to four points in uh, in the five-star qualifier over May Sakurai. I just went at three stars. Uh, match number two, Amy Sori just obliterates poor Waka. I don't say it obliterates. Waka got her flash falls at the uh, at the end with the crowd really bought. Um, so it was, a, it was a solid match. Three and three-fourth stars. Match number three was uh, Momo Kogo versus Ruaka. Um, I thought really smart here for uh, the way they're kind of building Momo Kogo up a little bit in this tournament. Whether she gets the five star or not, I don't know, but I like the fact that she's getting some quality wins here uh, that she got she got here because this will build her up next month as she's challenging Azumi for the high speed championship. And you see her in, not only in these matches but in the tag matches that she's been having. And I'm assuming we'll have leading up to that match that she's uh, throwing some high speed offense in, kind of give you a little glimpse. So I think that match is going to be really, really good. I just went at three and a quarter stars. Match four is uh, Mina Shirakawa, Mom Watanabe, and Natsupoi. Um, we know what happened here. Hey, man, accidents happen. This is the match that Natsupoi got hurt on. Right, I'm assuming she got a concussion. They took her off the road for a couple shows. Smart. Uh, you know, it was really good back and forth action with the three. I was a really big fan of Mina. I'm really a big fan of just how Mina's been improving. It looked like she had a really good five star, and then she had that match with Tam, and I think she got hurt. And she was kind of up and down, up and down. And then those past month or so, six six weeks or so, she's really, really improved her game. You know, her striking game, her selling, her tag stuff with Yunagi uh, and Tam's been really, really good. Everything's been really, really crisp. What she does has a lot of meaning to it, you know, with the elbows, the roaring elbows. Uh, sometimes she'll miss one to set the heel up, or, you know, or her opponent up for something big coming up. So I, I really enjoyed that. I really enjoyed Momo and Mina stuff here, but it was just, you know, I watched this back twice. I don't, I don't like to watch injury things, but I kind of just wanted to see what happened. It just seemed like Natsupoi might have been going a little bit too fast, and I think Momo tried to overcompensate with the wrench and just caught her right in the top of the head, and you know, cut her open a little bit and disqualification, rightfully so. What's that's what needed to happen. Three and a quarter stars. I haven't heard anything else really on it. So I think that, um, you know, she might have just had a mild concussion, take her out the road for a couple days, you know, make sure that they heal up. I don't know if she had to get stitches or if uh, staples or if it was just something that it healed on her own. But, uh, yeah, it was nasty. And hopefully we kind of just do away with the wrench, you know, for a little bit. I can understand if you do it in the, the kick pad. It's a little bit more safer. You can kind of turn it. But, again, then again, freak accidents happen. You know, it's wrestling. It's Anybody can get hurt any time. And that's one of the reasons why I appreciate this sport so much. Again, I've been doing it for 20 years. So I understand that anybody can get hurt at any time. And that's why sometimes it really kind of irks me when somebody is kind of putting somebody down on a match that they had. It's like, look, they're going in front of people. And, they're you know, they're trying their all. There's a possibility that they can get hurt. So, again, I say it all the time in this podcast – in the immortal words of the late, great Rowdy Rowdy Piper, if you answer a bell, I got all the respect in the world for you. Match number five saw, this was a good one. Match number five saw the God's Eye team of Shuri and Mirai versus Tam and Yunagi. It was really, really good. Again, we're building up to this Shuri and Tam match. Not sure what's going to happen because we have next month Momo and Shuri. Again, if if Shuri retains, is, you know, is that where we're going with Tam? Is Tam are we doing it after the five star? Is Tam and Sherry a match that we're building towards for the New Japan show? 15,000 people. Tam's a big star. Sherry's their champion. I mean, that's a possibility. There's a lot of questions, really good questions, that uh, us fans that are watching this product that have to see what's uh, what's coming up. But they, that was the main crux of the match. Obviously, Yunagi stuff looked really good. She's another one that's really, really improving uh, by leaps and bounds. Not that she was bad anyway, but like she's she's really, really been on her game. And, like, uh, and Mirai's fantastic as well I'd like to see a mirai tam match somewhere down the line again maybe in the five star i think this year's five star is just going to be very much similar to like the way the new japan five stars were in like 2015 16 17 18 where it's like you have eight matches on the card and four of them are like four plus star matches so you know if you're listening to this i know there's some people that listen to this that don't subscribe to stardom world which is okay uh, you know they watch the free stuff on youtube and they're not really sure if they want to go that might be a good way i think it's like it's like eight bucks you know, I think it's like $8 and change, you know, uh, U.S. currency 
a month. So, I mean, if this is the five star that we're going to get, you're, you're going to be getting how many four plus star matches, you know, show after show after show after show. I think that's a good way to kind of rope people in. So I think it's, you know, one of the most best bang for your buck for anything uh, with entertainment. So anywho, uh, you, yeah, I thought this is really good. Uh, Mariah uses the double wrist lock. I know she calls it something different. I will be being someone who studies catch wrestling and appreciates catch wrestling. I will always call it the double wrist lock. So that I know she has it with her fan, with her name in it, but I think the way she does it, the way she works it, the way she kicks out the leg to roll, she does it absolutely perfectly. But Mariah uses the double wrist lock to submit Unagi, uh, three and a half stars. Moving on, the Stars team of Mayu Iwatani, Hazuki, and Koguma versus the Donald DeMundel team of Himika, Micah, and Julia. Uh, I thought the match was really funny how Mayu was trying to, like, almost Jedi mind trick. Ooh, I got a Star Wars reference. And Jedi mind trick Micah to try to go for Moonsault right from the beginning. And the fact that she went was going for it, you know, that's one of the little comedy tropes that I do like. I think that I thought that was pretty good. Uh, you knew where this was going to go. You know this was going to go to the time of Madra, and it did. I had it three and three fourth stars. I thought this was it was really good, a really solid match. Again, Mike and Himika together, uh, the way that they work those clotheslines uh, one after another, and do the sandwich clothesline, then usually goes into a Micah Falsy uh, with a, usually the Michinoku driver. I'm a big fan of that, and you know, I, I made mention that um, I really wanted to see the uh, Mike and Himika team versus Hazuki and Kogamon. I got a little bit of a little bit of a treat here, a little bit of a of a preview. So maybe that's somewhere they go they go down the line. So and then the main event of this show saw the Queen's Quest team of Lady Fee, Sai Kamatani, and Yutami versus uh Starlight Kid, Saki Cashman, Fukin Death. So you have um you know two thirds of the goddess of uh no, excuse me, the artists of stardom champions uh, in this match. Uh thought this was uh you know it was really, really solid. You kinda knew where uh who was gonna take the pinfall. Poor Lady C. She eats the pinfall from the Kishikasai from uh Saki. The match got a lot of time, almost 17 minutes. I think I had 16.48 on my notes here, three and a half stars. I thought, thought everything was really good. They did the main crux of this match was teasing the, uh, not teasing, but we're getting Starlight Kid versus uh, Sai Kamatani for the white belt here in a few weeks. So, you know, Yutami, she looked really good. Lady C always seems to take the heat. But then when she gets her comeback, she makes it make sense, you know, between the big boot and the chops that she throws. You know, she has that... Uh, Giant Baba style, or excuse me, uh, Kiritawe style, choke sandwich, obviously, uh, Holy Demon Army, my favorite tag team of all time, so I'll always pop big for that. But yeah, the main crux of this match was just giving us just a little appetizer of Sai Kamatani and Starlight Kid. And if you listen to this podcast and you like Stardom, which I'm assuming you do, I'm pretty sure that 99.9% .9 of us are super excited for this match. So moving on to show number three, 616. Okay, so we get into Lady C versus May Sakurai. Both at two points. They both wind up getting three points. Time limit draw. Solid match. Three and a half stars. Match number two. Saw a three-way between Saida, Waka, and Tam. Again, you know that Waka's taking the fall. I thought Tam would have gotten the pinfall here, but she didn't. It was uh, Saida with the uh, the rollback, the double rollback pin for the win. Really solid stuff. Uh, really, again, they do a really good job of kind of building Waka. They break her down and then build her up, and we see kind of the intensity she has. So, and then we saw some really good stuff with her and Tam. So you're wondering maybe she will break away from Cosmic Angels maybe go to a more aggressive group after she gets her first win or to help her get her first win. So that's something to look out for, too, considering the fact that uh, Colors have just joined Cosmic Angels. So there's another wrinkle in the Wakasumiyama story. Again, somebody that not only doesn't have any wins, but whenever she's in a match, she you know she's always taking the fall. But it's one of the most interesting stories in stardom. So a really good booking job there. Saida versus Tam is definitely a singles match that I would like to see. Match number three. Yutami and Sai Kamatani versus Mina and Yunagi. This was a match I was... One of the great things is, like, I'll read the results, and then they go up on Stardom World three, four days later, and I'm just so busy with so much stuff going on that I kind of forget, like, what's on the card. So it's almost like Christmas. Like, I'll hit the play button. I'm like, oh, this is on here? This is on here? And I pretty much just like everybody in Stardom. So it's like, I, I'm always, you know, happy to see it. So you have Mina and Yunagi, who I talked about is just, you know, one of my favorite improving tag teams in all of wrestling, versus Yutami and Saya. Uh, Yutami, one of the wrestlers of the year last year. Saya... Uh, Kamatani, one of the wrestlers of the year this year, former tag champs, you know, part of one of the most badass factions, Queen's Quest. You know, they, you know, this thing was going to be really good. Uh, and, you know, it sure was. It sure was. And I thought this was going to go to a time limit draw, but it didn't. I was a big fan of how Yutami's really showing her strength. We've seen it, all, you know, a lot lately where she'll pick somebody up for the torture rack. But instead of doing the torture rack bomb, she'll spin them, hold them in the German suplex for a position and then do the stalling German suplex. And I've always said that Yutami, she has got a lot in her arsenal with the clotheslines, you know, the BT bomb the hijack bomb, the air raid crash. But I think her German suplex is her best hold. And I know in, you know, 2020, um, 2022, like the German suplex hold is kind of like 
you know, kind of passe, like, oh, you know, this person does it or that person does it or whatever. But if you work it real well, kind of like how Takayama did, you know, X amount of years ago, you can really get anything over as a finisher. And I think she does a, a really good job getting getting the German suplex sold as a finisher. But I like how she's doing this torture rack into uh, the German suplex. Again, me and Unagi really good together. You tell me and me and are just slugging away at each other. Yeah. I'm all in for that. Three and three fourth stars. Match number four, the God's Eye team of the World of Stardom Champion, Shuri, uh, Amy Sori, and Mirai versus the Donald DeMetal team of Julia, Micah, and Himika. Another hard hitting match. Uh, what, you know, something that we know we'd see. Shuri and Julia teasing, you know, their little feud again. Again, I think that Julia is winning the five star, and I think she's going to be the one to dethrone Shuri. We just saw them have a match at World, the first night at World Climax uh, back in April. So two months ago, I thought it was Julia's best match I've ever seen. Sherry was just another day in the park for her having another great match. And I think that's smart how you break somebody down, you know, to build them back up. You know, we saw Mayu lost twice to EO before she uh, won the title. We saw Homicide chasing the title against Brian Danielson for over a year. I think Nigel McGuinness had something like two or three unsuccessful title shots until he beat uh, Takeshi Morishima. So I'm a big fan of the, you know, you lose, you keep building the champion up. You break that person down a little bit. You send them down a couple of roads. Eventually, you build them back up. And then, you know, you get the title belt put back on them. And I think that's what's going to happen. So, uh, the Julia Sherry stuff was great. And, again, you know, break apart the other two teams. You know, Amy Sorry and Mirai, who are the next challenges for the God uh, belts. And uh, Mike and Himika, four hard-hitting women. You know me. I like my no-bullshit wrestling. I like everything about wrestling, to be honest. But my no-bullshit wrestling, we just have... People just hitting each other hard, submissions that make sense, bumps that make sense, psychology, the selling, you know, selling something and then kind of firing back up, just kind of not no selling, but like fighting through the pain. Like I always say, like Minoru Suzuki, Yuji Nagata, Brian Davies are like three of the best to study on that. We can see that they're in pain, but they're fighting through the pain. Like how many times have you seen a fight, like a UFC fight or even, geez, I just talked about, you know, Takayama and Takayama and Don Fry where they're hitting each other in the face and you can see that they're in so much pain, but they're still going through it. I mean, how do you not get behind that? So a uh, really solid match, time limit drop. I got no problem with time limit draw on this one, three and three, four stars. Match number five, eight person tag team match. You saw the, you saw, we saw, we all saw. The Oedo Tai team of Starlight Kid, Momo Watanabe, Ruaka, and Saki Kashima versus the Stars team of Koguma, Hazuki, Momo Kogo, and Mayu Iwatani. Again, I talked about Momo Kogo. Turn Starlight Kid to start. High speed. That was good. You know, Starlight Kid is one of the best in this division over the last two years. And you saw how uh, Momo Kogo handled it. I thought it was really, really good. Really, really smart to kind of give us that little inkling of high speed with her. I thought that was really good. They thought they did a really, really good exchange. I don't think Momo is going to beat Azumi for the uh, high speed championship, but I'd like to see her stay in the division. The division. I'd like to see her have a match against her stablemate Kogum. I'd like to see her have a match against Starlight Kid. I thought that was uh, that was really good. Really good exchanges with Hazuki and Starlight Kid as well. Again, Starlight Kid, one of the best last two years at the high speed offense. Hazuki, one of the best ever at it. And they not only did they have a little bit of the high speed in there, but a little bit of the hard hitting action as well. I thought that was really good. And then you had the Mayu and uh, Saki stuff, which will never get old. Obviously, Saki, one of the many, many people that have broke poor Mayu's heart and turned on her. So I thought that was really good. Always seems to be, she always seems to be the thorn in poor Mayu's side. So they can always they have, they play that up a little bit in the match. Um, I was a big fan of Hazuki and um, um, Hazuki's. Uh, they do the stereo drop kicks her and Mayu. Big fan of when they do that with the boot scrapes. Uh, breaking down with Momo and Hazuki, that was really good. Uh, it's a big fan of obviously the finish, the freedom drop kick. Anytime you do, uh, you take a spot from the freedom. Obviously, uh, you know Mayu, one of the big stable mates in freedom. Uh, freedom drop kick on Ruaka hits the moonsault. Uh, three and three four stars. I thought that was really good, and I was a big fan of Mayu's promo. You, only Mayu can get away with, <laughs> can get away with where she's like. Last time we were here, I ate too much and I threw up and couldn't do the show. <laughs> I just thought, you know, if anybody else said that, you like, uh, but it's Mayu. She gets the free pass on it. <laughs> you know, she's just the. Uh, She's just the best. So moving on to the final show we're going to review, uh, 618 from Sendai. We saw Rina move up to four points. She gets the uh, win over Miyu Amasaki. Uh, the, my first note, and again, I'm not going to touch upon all the notes. We'll be here forever. Is uh, This is the future of stardom, and the future looks bright. Obviously, the main event is stacked. Uh, you know, this is like seven, eight, nine people that can main event Cork and Hall show. And, Everybody would tune in or probably sell out, do close to sell out. The, uh, the middle of the card is really good. And you got these young competitors, you know, Rina, Hina, Hannah, uh, Miyu, Momo Kogo. It's like 
Yeah, these are our bottom tier people, folks. <laughs> They're so good. This is really good. Everything was really solid. Everything really made sense. There's no waste in motion. Um, Rena over with the double knees, three and a half stars. Hina over Lady C with the ghetto clutch. Uh, the pulls are up to three points. I didn't see that coming. I thought that Lady C would get the win here because I believe I said and I'm staying with it. Uh, it's going to be Amy Sori, Saida, and Lady C going to be the three people that are going to have the most points and go on to the five star. And I thought this would be an, not an easy win for Lady C, but I figured that she'd get the win here. Obviously, she didn't. You know, much to my surprise, solid match three and a quarter stars. Uh, match three had Koguma, Yunagi, and Saki. This is very similar to the match that I didn't care too much for about a week or two ago where they had like all these wild rules with the Zumi in it. I was just like, yeah, I'm just kind of confused on what's going on. I had trouble following it, but I thought this one was – they took a little bit more of the comedy out, and the comedy made a little more sense, and they did a little more wrestling, which uh, I was a fan of. Koguma gets the uh, the win here. Uh, three stars. Match number four, the Donald Mundo team of Julia and Himika versus uh, Momo Kogo and Saida. Momo Kogo and Saida is a very interesting tag team. It's a tag team that, you know, it's kind of like the younger team, a team that you're not going to expect to really kind of mow through opponents, but that they do a good job selling, making their opponents look good, and then, you know, firing back up. Obviously, Saida, one of the hardest hitters in stardom, uh, the way she fires up. And Momo does a really good job selling. And then when she gets the hot tag from the Heat or when she makes her comeback, she does have a really explosive offense, you know, with the springboard dropkick. And then she does that outside, inside uh, crossbody from the second rope. That I thought was really good. And she makes her offense really mean something. So I think that's a this is a, a team that I like to see wrestle Micah, Himika, and FWC, Yunagi, Nina. You know, again, one of the I'm always looking at what are the teams going to be for uh, the Goddess starting tournament in the fall. And this is one that I'd be I'd peg. I'd like to see Momo, Kogo, and Saeed to team up. Uh, I thought that's I thought it was really good. A really solid exchange uh, between Julia and, uh, and Saida. And Julia taps out Saida with a Bianca. A little bit over 10 minutes. Three and a half stars. And then they have a little, you know, it's funny because Julia, like, gets the, uh, she's kind of almost like a tweener. Because she's, like, so good you don't want to boo her. But sometimes she does, like, a lot of heel tactics. So she'll say some heel stuff. So she taps out Saida. Everybody loves Saida. You know, comes back from that injury. And they kind of get in each other's face. And then as Julia's leaving, she... <laughs> kind of uppercuts Saida's bad arm that she just tapped out. I was like, what a jerk move. But then she kind of got applauded on her way up to the ramp. So it's like, you know, who are we? <laughs> um, match number five saw the Cosmic Angels team of Tam, Waka, and Mina versus the Stars team of Mayo Iwatani, Hannah, and Hazuki. Get, these teams gel really well together. It always seems when the Stars team, you have Mayo, Hazuki, and then insert whoever. I always prefer Koguma because she's, uh, you know, the tag champ with Hazuki. And Mayu and Koguma have really good chemistry together with their tag moves. It always seems if you have Mayu and Hazuki, you can insert out any other member of Stars, and they're going to gel really well together. The selling is going to be really good. The timing is going to be good. The double and triple team moves are going to be really good. The heat's going to be good. The firebacks going to be pretty good. And Tam, Waka, and Mina are just, uh, you know, the Cosmic Angels team, they seem to just really have their stuff together. You know, it comes to triple teams and quadruple teams. It's one thing to be able to be really good at double team, but then when you have a triple or quadruple team, your timing, if one person's timing is off or bring positions off a little, it can kind of almost like the domino effect. They kind of like throw the whole thing off. I think Cosmic Angels, when it comes to the triple and quadruple team, I think they do it better than any of their factions at stardom. Um, so, I, I, again, and this match just gelled real well together. Hazuki gets the Sentai win over Waka. Shocker, right? Three and three-fourth stars. Moving on to the co-main event of this show. Utami and Saya. I'm a big fan of this. These uh, shows where we're getting Utami and Saya just teaming up and just regular tags. You know, most of these shows, you might get one or two tag matches here or there. But it's mostly six and eight person matches, which you know, I'm not going to complain. But you're having Saya and Utami, two of the best, again, former uh, former goddess of stardom tag champs, teaming up just about on each and every one of these shows uh, versus um, Mike and May Sakurai from Donald Del Mundo. So, again, this is just another good showing for the Aphrodite team. They're doing a really good job. I mean, okay, again, it's, you know, let me rewind the rewind the tape there a little bit. I mean, it makes sense that having Utami and Sai in all these matches and kind of putting them over, making them look good. If you're having Kari and Mystery Person, who again I think is Tony Storm, you know, you're building them up for a big match. I think just smart. You keep putting them on these shows, keep them tagging, keep you know giving them these matches, you know, 10, 11, 12 minutes, making them look good. You know, make their opponents look good. A little, you know, on the way as well. That's just the mark of a great wrestler when you can look good, and make your opponents look good, it makes everybody look good. Uh, so I think it's smart having you Tommy inside just constantly tagging on these shows to build them up for that Kari and insert opponent. Again, I think it's going to be Tony Storm. But then let me know who you think it is. You know, Drop me a line. You guys know how to get a hold of me. Matt Turner OF on Twitter and Instagram and uh, Stardom Cast on Twitter. That's the three best ways to uh, to get a hold of me. Those are the three social media things I check 
the most. Anywho, the match. Um, again, Yutami, German suplex. Uh, you know, she gets the uh, she gets the win over May with a German suplex at about 11 minutes, three and a half stars. Main event of the final show to review. We have the God's Eye team of Shuri, Amy Sori, and Mirai versus the Oedo Tai team of Momo Watanabe, Ruaka, Starlight Kid. This match was a preview. We got the preview two or three times in this for Shuri versus Momo Watanabe. And I'm kind of just watching it. I'm thinking, you know, us as wrestling fans have real high expectations. And if sometimes that they're not met, we get disappointed. Shuri and Momo from last year, final of the five star. It was the best final I've ever seen of uh, of the five star. And one of my matches, overall top ten matches of the year was a you know easy five star for me. One of Shuri's best matches ever. One of Momo Watanabe's best matches ever, which is saying a lot considering their catalog. And it's like, if this match isn't anything less than like a five-star match, I think some people think they're going. To, we might be disappointed. Uh, I don't think it's going to be. I don't think we're going to be disappointed. And we definitely weren't. I wasn't disappointed. And people that I talked to uh, on Twitter weren't disappointed by these exchanges because these two, these two beat the crap out of each other, which was, I thought it was, it was cool how Sherry, she did that snapmare back kick that she's just been destroying poor people with, like Matt's a point star, like kid, just absolutely destroying them with. And she hits it on Momo, Momo shakes it off, and then Sherry, like, takes an ass bump, sits down, and, like, wants Momo to kick her. Momo kicks her three or four times. And just like, oh, boy, like, this, it, they're doing a good job previewing this. I think after the pay-per-view this week, I think you're going to see Momo and Sherry on a lot, opposite ends of a lot of multi-person tag matches just to kind of keep giving us that build and keep giving us that tease, which I will not be complaining about at all. Um, Mariah Varaka with the double wrist lock, 13 minutes, 17 seconds, three and three-fourth stars. And that will take us to the end of the four shows. So if there's any match that usually I kind of go into a little depth detail um, on it. Again, just for the, we're, you know, coming up almost 50 minutes here, just for the process of time, I kind of just breeze through those. So if there's any match that you want to talk about, you know, long form, again, drop me a line. I got no, no problem with that. Okay, so we will now go into the pay-per-view. Uh, that will be airing this Saturday. Let's see. So let me just pull up the card here. So let's, so as of right now, as of this recording, there's only six matches. Uh, you know, the artists of starter matches have nine people, and the main event has six, and then we have a couple people out injured. So it might be a quick show. At the same time, I think that a lot of these matches will be given a lot of time, which I have no problem with. The first match, or what I'm assuming is the first match, is a three-way between Waka, Ruwaka, and Yunagi. Obviously, Waka is taking the pinfall here, but maybe this is something. Maybe we see. Maybe I think Unagi's going to pin Waka. Maybe you see something here where you see uh, maybe Waka get a little frustrated here. You know that her teammate. Maybe she. Maybe she has Ruwaka. She has her beat. Unagi breaks up the pinfall, and either she pins Ruwaka or she pins Waka. You see Waka getting really upset at Unagi, and maybe like pushes her, and then kind of leaves without her. Possibility. So I mean, literally right on match one, you're going to have. You know what's going to probably be a pretty salt matches. A pretty salt match. Probably not going to go too, too long. And then uh, you might have a cool story. Match number two. Again, I talked about it's uh, Saeeda and Momo Kogo versus the Queen's Quest team, Miyu Amasaki and Lady C. You know, I talked about how I'm a big fan of the Saeeda and Momo Kogo tag team. Again, it's not a tag team that gets a lot of shine on it just because they're kind of, you know, on the mid card, the lower mid card. And there's just a lot of really stacked tag teams in Stardom right now. Interesting to see how Miyu and Lady C work together. I think this is going to be a salt match, but with Momo Kogo getting the artist, excuse me, the high speed championship match coming up here in just a few weeks, uh, I fully see Momo Kogo getting the pinfall win here on either on either Lady C or uh, Miyu. It'd be pretty cool. If she hits the uh, the peach nectar on Lady C. That'd be a sight, considering that she's probably like a foot and a half taller. Lady C's like a foot and a half taller than Momo Kogo. Match three, a match that I'm really really interested in. Uh, really interested to see. You have uh, Mina Shirakawa going up against Himika. Uh, Himika, we finally had her breakout match. I think know a lot of people waiting for her to get a main event match, either for the white belt or the red belt. We saw her have that fantastic match with Shiri. You know, she's coming off a really, really good run. Not coming off, she's still on a really, really hot run. You know, between the tag and six-person stuff she's doing with Donald Del Mundo. Mina Shirakawa, I sing her praises all the time. You know, these past few episodes about how well improved she is. Here is on a pay-per-view, she has a singles match up against somebody that's really on the run of her career. I think this match is going to absolutely steal the show. I know the focus is on the two cage matches, as far as, and it's the only, as of right now, the only actual singles match on the show. So it's kind of, even though just a singles match is not a number one contender or qualify for anything, kind of has its own almost gimmick in it because it is the uh, only singles match. So I think this is going to absolute steal the show. Coin flip on who I think is going to win. But I'm going to say Mina. I think this is where Mina gets a real big win and it gives her some momentum going into the five star. Match number three. Oh boy. Uh, 
For the Artist of Stardom Championships, we have the champions, the defending champions, the Awaito Tai team of Starlight Kid, Saki Kashima, and Momo Watanabe going up against the Donald Del Mundo team of Sherry, Micah, and Mei Sakurai, and against uh, defending against Sherry, Amy Sori, and Mirai. Again, I think this a lot of this match, you're going to see Momo and Sherry just kind of just wayland on each other. You're on a pay-per-view. This is a big spot to kind of almost give a free advertisement for your next pay-per-view. You know, I mean, here it is. You're going to be have these two kind of give them a couple good exchanges and have the commentating team, you know, almost like say kind of, you know, ham fisted. Hey, if you enjoy this, just wait where there's not seven other competitors in this match or just the two of them. Oh, it's for the richest prize in all of stardom. So uh, with that being said, uh, the Oweda Tai team, Oweda Tai team, they just won the belts. I don't see them losing it just yet. I see them. I see Saki maybe rolling up May Sakurai here for the win. Actually, you know, I think the smart thing would have Momo get the get the fall here. Have Momo get the fall here, and maybe even pin maybe either Mirai or Amy Sori. I think that's you know that's what I would that's what I would do. I'd have Momo pin uh, Mirai to give her more momentum. You know, Mirai is on a roll. She just won the uh, she won the Cinderella a few months ago. She had that five star instant classic match with Sayaka Matani. She's picked up a couple wins since losing that match. And has uh, made it very adamant in uh, pro match promos that she's going to come back for that belt. You know, maybe she's the one, again, building, breaking somebody down to build them back up. Maybe she is going to be the one that eventually uh, unseats Saya on her legendary white belt run. But I think we have to give Momo a win here on Mirai. It's not going to really hurt Mirai because there's seven other competitors in the match. And you're putting more steam behind Momo um, on her match against Sherry. So that's going to be my bold prediction for that match. But I do definitely see the Wido Tai team. Retaining. And then we go to the co-main event, the first ever cage match in the history of stardom, Natsupoy versus Tam. Again, this is a coin flip. I think because they're building Tam, and that, like I said, they're almost having like a, th- a three-match series because after this, they're having a singles match with uh, with no cage. But I mean, who knows? They maybe they'll come up with a stipulation afterwards. But you're building Tam up for this match with Shuri, whether it's for the belt or not. You know, we don't know because we don't know the outcome of the match with Momo coming up in a few weeks. But I think that Tam gets the win here. But I would not be shocked to see Natsupoy uh, get the win. Can you have two crazy competitors? I mean, Natsupoy, she loves throwing caution to the win. And we've seen Tam in these big pay-per-view matches. You know, especially the one against Sai Kamatani at World Climax, taking her Karanas off the uh, turnbuckle onto the outside and onto absolutely nobody. You know, you always see these dives where the factions are catching each other, which, hey, safety for it looks cool you know the bowling pin thing but you know tam it's just nuts just taking these crazy bumps and then does the dive off the entrance so who knows what her nats are going to do but i have uh, tam on the win on that one and speaking of crazy not to be outdone who's going to be the craziest person in this cage match as we have for the main event we have the queen's quest team of utami saya azumi versus the uh, stars team of mayu iwatani koguma and hizuki a lot of champions in this match you have the high speed champion you have the Wonder of Stardom Champion. You have the SWA Champion and the Goddess of, Champ- uh, the Goddess of Stardom Championship. Goddess of Stardom Champions, excuse me. And the only person that doesn't have a belt, Utami, is the uh, official leader of Queen's Quest. So, I mean, hey, that's a good title to have as well. Because I think Queen's Quest is like, the, you know, the, the faction of factions. I always say they're the they're the four horsemen for all you old school wrestling fans of, uh, of Stardom. So, you know, not a bad title to have. So, this is a tough match. This is another one, uh, a coin flip here. I think just with the way that they're being uh, Queen's Quest is being built back up, I think Utami's gonna get the victory here. And maybe you see, oh geez, maybe if Utami pins a Hazuki or Koguma, they do a Utami versus Saya versus FWC. Oh, there is a. I thought they were just building up Utami and Saya for Kari and insert name here, Tony Storm. But maybe they're building him up for a tag title match. I don't know. But I guess the question is, who's going to do the craziest stuff here? Is it going to be Saya? Is it going to be Koguma? Is it going to be Hazuki? Is it going to be Mayu? You may see Izumi doing some crazy stuff. I don't don't see Utami doing any shooting star presses off the cage. I think she's going to kind of... And the fact that she's kind of like the least craziest, like like the least high flyer in this match, actually kind of adds to her game because she'll just be like powerbombing people into the cage. So, pardon me, need another drink. Um, yeah, interesting to see. Actually, my wife just texted me maybe about a half an hour ago, and she has the exact same picks as me. So... That doesn't make it for as much fun in my household as my wife is so competitive. So, oh, yeah, but that's uh, that should bring an end to uh, the podcast. Thank you so much, everybody, for your support. Again, thank you for the patience. Hopefully, I have no problem upload, sending this over to my man, Sean, and editing and getting it out in a timely fashion. Hopefully, my the saving will work and the Wi-Fi will work. And it just seems like there's so many kinks kinks that uh, we've been working through the last two weeks. But everybody's been super positive, and I appreciate your patience. And 
like I said, for all the Patreon members, I have a lot of stuff, uh, you know, coming down the work. So it's a good time to subscribe to the Patreon. You know, the three dollar tier gets you two bonus episode episodes uh, per month. Um, that'll be starting next month. So I'm trying to barrel out two more episodes to you by the end of this month, beginning of uh, next month, which is July. Holy jeepers, we're halfway through the month. And for the Red Belt tier Patreon members, we will be doing a watch along. Well, uh, later this week, maybe even as soon as tomorrow, I will be recording. From the Cinderella tournament final from last year, Utami Aishista versus Shiri. And uh, we'll be doing a watch along with that. And that, you know, I talk about kinks and whatnot's going on. Again, I live in the middle of nowhere, Pennsylvania. So a lot of times the internet works when it wants to. So there's a good possibility when I'm watching this on Stardom War that the feed may freeze for a second or two. But heck with it, man. We're going to go with it. Card subject to change. You know, so Roddy Piper would say, hey, man, leave it in there. That's where the magic happens. So uh, that's what we're going to do. But thank you so much. Um, closing out this episode. If you guys need anything, any questions, comments, suggestions, again, keep the positive feedback comment. I greatly appreciate it. Really, really, you know, you know, really makes my day. Just hit me up on Twitter and Instagram, Matt Turner OF, or you can always hit up the Stardom Cast on Twitter as I check that one as well. The Discord and everything else, not so much. Again, I'm just so busy. It's kind of tough running the, the two accounts, but that's the best way to get a hold of me. Yeah, greatly appreciate it, guys. And just remember, we're all in this together. And remember, Everybody's different. Everybody's special. Thank you so much. Love you guys so much. and Have a great day.